You know that movie everyone seems to like, but there's always that one guy that doesn't care for it? About 30 minutes into this one, I was kind of afraid I was going to be that guy. Mission, colon, impossible, colon, ghost protocol. So Ethan Hunt is back for a fourth time, and it's up to him and his new team to complete the mission. Someone blew up the Kremlin, and Ethan and his team are to blame for it. The secretary of the IMF is like, yeah, you guys need to fix this, or we're going to hang you guys out to dry. So everyone is pissed at the IMF, and that whole section gets disavowed. So Ethan and his team have to do this whole mission without backup. And their mission is to get the guy that blew up the Kremlin and stop him from launching a warhead. Here's one of my issues with the movie. It was like it was like a solid 30, 40 minutes before they even got to the point I just described. I kind of just wish they cut out the whole prison break sequence in the beginning. Not that it was bad, it was just the pacing for the first 30 minutes felt a bit off and I think the prison break was kind of one of the reasons why. But once the movie gets going, it, it really gets going. Like I like that it wasn't the Tom Cruise show. It was like, we like Ethan, but there were three other people working with him that you wanted to get to know. Jeremy Renner plays, um, I think his first name was William, but the last name is Brant. But uh, he's, he's an analysis, so he's like really out of his element when it comes to field work, or so it seems. Paula Patton. Paula Patton. Um, just want one second. Hey, uh, I'd like to cancel my order for Skyrim. Um, yeah, just just get me a poster of Paula Patton and a bottle of lotion. Okay, thank you, Santa. Talk to you later. Peace. She she's also a field agent like Ethan, and um, I I really liked her motivation for this one. Like, the movie just doesn't throw her in a cat fight halfway through for the sake of a for the sake of a cat fight. Like, she has a good reason to want to beat up a certain assassin chick. And when they finally do fight, you are cheering her on. And the fourth member of the team is Simon Pegg, who you might remember as the techie from Mission Colon Impossible Colon 3. He's a field agent now and provides a lot of the movie's comic relief. I, I like the humor the movie had for the most part. Like, I'm going to be honest, it didn't always hit, and it did lead to some awkward moments in the theater. Like, for example, Ethan has like the corniest line at the climax of the movie, and it, it was just, wow. But yeah, all four of them are working together to find the guy that blew up the Kremlin since he has Russian launch codes. And here's the problem I have with the villain. You do not learn a single thing about this guy. Like, I'm not going to act like Mission, colon, Impossible, colon, 3, developed their villain either, but Philip Seymour, Philip Seymour Hoffman had presence, like, you didn't know much about the guy, but they still managed. he still managed to get inside Ethan's head, scare him, and make him worry about his wife. Like, you didn't know him, but you felt like you did. Like, he was an effective villain. Ghost Protocol's villain is literally, I want to launch a warhead. Okay, bye. That and the fact that he can fight is all you learn about him. He's not given much of a monologue to explain himself, so that was kind of a wasted villain. Which is sad since they did make the effort to get the guy from the Swedish girl with the dragon tattoo. But going back to the positives, the stunts are great, the action is fantastic, everyone seemed to everyone seemed to love Tom Cruise climbing the Dubai Tower halfway through, which definitely had its moments, but to be honest, I was more impressed with the stamps with the chase scene and the sandstorm. Um, I also like the sound in this movie, like when someone threw a punch, you felt it. Another thing, I, I'm glad they actually acknowledge Ethan's wife in this one. Like, I always hated it when movie sequels, especially in this genre, ignore the chick that half, that half of their previous movie was about. So it was nice if I actually remember Julia. Um, but yeah, despite a little rocky start, some pacing issues, mainly toward the beginning, and humor that sometimes missed, this was a fun mission. The action was great, I liked the characters, the stunts were top-notch, I could easily recommend this, but out of the whole series, I'd say Mission Colon, Impossible Colon 3 is still my favorite.